Express LRS3 series are pretty awesome. They're small, inexpensive, and has really good range. But what if these things stop working or just fail to flash? Do we throw them away? Maybe. But what if there was a way to save or unbreak this receiver? Well, Beta FB has the right tool to do just that in their Express LRS recovery dongle. So let's take a closer look at this and see if this can save my receiver. Okay, so here's the bag right here. Pretty straightforward, very typical of Beta FPV and their packaging. On the back here, it says FTDI burning device, which is what this actually is, is an FTDI recovery tool. So they've made some improvements to it and put it in a really nice, easy to use package. This, that's one of the benefits of this, is that Beta FB has done a great job packaging and giving you some extra accessories to make this process a lot easier. So let's open this up and see what's inside. First thing here is the actual dongle. It says Express LRS Recovery Dongle. And there's some words on here, TXRX 5 volts and ground. So these are the four connections to go to a typical Express LRS receiver. Looks pretty nice, nice casing here. Typically when you buy these, these things are exposed with you know, all the connections available. But it's really nice and you can power this with a USB-C plug or do a flashing of your receiver with the USB-C port right here. Besides that you have a harness here for said connections and this goes into your dongle and then these individual connections go to your receiver. So really good. And that's pretty cool because not every Express LS receiver has the same pin layout. So you might have voltage one side or RX on one side and this gives you the flexibility to connect each one individually and separately. Besides that you have another adapter right here, that's pretty cool, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. And that's it, not bad for the price point. So look at this, you have two sets of pins right here. The one you wanna use is the top portion, and obviously you wanna match up the power and the ground to the right connection. So we'll do that right here. And now we have this connected. Now I have a receiver right here, and I didn't intend to do this. Um, I've used Express LS for a while and I've never had one fail on me. But I was doing a build recently and I tried to use one of my Express LS receivers and it just didn't want to go into Wi-Fi mode. So yeah, this one here, I can't do anything with it. So let's just show you what's going on. The cool thing about this is that you can use this to actually test your receivers as well. So I'm just gonna put this to the ground. Now this pen layout can vary from receiver to receiver, so please refer to your instruction manual for your specific model. So those are the only two I'm gonna connect because I wanna to test to see if this thing is gonna work. So the cool thing is that you have a USB-C plug right here. So all I have to do is just get a power bank or a computer power source, power up my dongle here. And as you can see, the receiver is flashing green. Now usually after 10 to 30 seconds, this thing will go into Wi-Fi mode and then I could flash it. What's happening is this is gonna take some time and then it's just gonna start back over again. It's never gonna go into Wi-Fi mode. There it is. It almost attempted to and it just start over again. So I cannot flash it. This receiver is in sense bricked. So this will be a good opportunity for this FTDA adapter to recover this receiver. We'll see if it works. Okay, so now that we've tested this receiver and we see that it doesn't work or it's kind of bricked, now it's time to actually flash it or try to recover it. Now there's two things I have to do here. One is connect these wires to this receiver here. So in my case, I have the RX on the outside and the TX on the inside. And it's just like any other wiring for a flight controller. You wanna put the RX to TX in the flight controller and the TX to the RX on the flight controller. So in this case, I'm gonna put the TX here to my RX, which is the outside one and then my RX to my TX on my receiver. And that will allow communication to go to and from the computer to my receiver. All right, the second thing I have to do here is put this into bootloader mode. Now, this can vary from receiver to receiver. Some receivers have a actual boot button. In my case, I don't have that. I have a little pad here, so I have to put some solder to connect these two pads in order to put it into bootloader mode. So I'm gonna go to the desk, put some solder on here, and then go to the computer and try to flash this. Okay, so we're here at the computer. I have my recovery dongle here and I also have my receiver now in the bootloader mode. I have these two pads here connected. And we can confirm that by powering this up and seeing if it stays in the bootloader mode. And as you can see, it's not flashing. It's just staying on steady on. So that means this thing is in bootloader mode, which is the mode you wanna have it in. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is connect this to your computer and hopefully it recognizes it. This will also power the device as well. Okay, so I plugged it in, it is powered. 
All right, so let's go to the Express LRS configurator. I have it right here. I'm using an older version. There is a new update available, but it's as simply as just choosing your release number. I'll stick with 2.3 since I know that works with my other receivers. And this is pretty straightforward, just like any other flashing of any receiver. I've done multiple videos on how to flash your receiver. I'll leave that video linked below so you can take a look at it. So just select your target. Let's see here. This is gonna be the Happy Model 2.4 gigahertz version. And this is the RX, so EP2400RX. Choose the one that's available to you. And in this case, we are gonna flash via UART. That's very crucial, important to know. All the standard stuff that you will use for normal. You also wanna have your binding phrase in here. I do have that already set automatically. It did remember that. And then down here, you wanna choose your port. That's the big thing here. So let's choose that manually. And in my case, it did recognize it, COM3, Silicon Labs. If you don't see anything in here, then most likely you don't have the appropriate driver on your computer. Now, this all looks good. All I have to do right now is just build and flash and uh, we should be good to go. Let's try it. Now, this can take a few minutes. This is my first time doing this, so it might take a while to actually build it. So let's see what happens here. Now, oh, it's right in it, that's good. Wow, okay guys. It said it was a success. That's good. The flash should be on here and this thing should be unbricked. Should be. All right, so let's close this out. Now, this thing is still in bootloader mode. So even if I power it up, it may not connect because that's what bootloader does. Okay, so I have power, it's still solid. Now, if you had a receiver with a bootloader button, then you should be good to go after that. So now I have to take off the solder on my two pads. So I'm gonna remove the solder on the pads and go to the table and see if this thing now connects to my radio. Okay, so we're back at the table. I have my receiver here. I did remove the solder on the boot pad, so this should go back into normal mode if everything did go well. So let's power it up and see for one if it does go into Wi-Fi mode. That'll be a good indicator that this thing has been flashed successfully. So here we go, we're flashing here. Hopefully you can see that. Let's see after 20 seconds or so, if this goes into Wi-Fi mode, indicated by a rapidly flashing light on here. So let's see if that happens. All right, oh, okay, there it is. Cool, so that's good. It's flashing really fast now. So this thing should be broadcasting, giving me a Wi-Fi network where I can now flash this via Wi-Fi. That was not working the first time around. So that's cool, let's power this down. The second thing I wanna check now to confirm that this thing is working is that I did flash this and based upon Express LRS, now I could just put my radio on and this thing should automatically connect to my radio. So let's power my radio on. All right, so let's power this up and see if this connects to my radio. Once I connect it, if this does work successfully, I will see a signal strength right here on my radio. So let's plug it back in and see if it works this time. Ha <laughs> ha! That worked, a successful connection. So let's unplug it. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Guys, this thing now works. Yeah, that's amazing. So now my receiver here works. I can now install this into my drone that I was gonna install it in. And I just saved myself, what, 13 to $15? But still, it is $13 and it's really, it's almost impossible to break this or make it unusable with a dongle like this. You can probably recover everything. So not only is this good for testing, it's also good for flashing as well. Now I prefer flashing via Wi-Fi. I do now have that option with this receiver now since it's working again. But the only way to recover these bricked receivers is through an FTDI you know, adapter. Is this thing here perfect, guys? No, not really. There's one thing I need to talk about is this little adapter here. Now, they include this in here, and the goal here is to just use this to test and to flash your receivers. And let's try that out and see if it works. It's really difficult or near impossible to have a connection with the tabs on your receiver. I mean, you have these little hook-looking things, and it might work. Okay, so, their intention is that you just touch this and look, it does power up, but you see, it's gone again. It goes, you know, it, it doesn't really keep connection as you can see. So could you imagine trying to flash a receiver midway through your flash and you lose connection? 
Ugh. Now, the, I, as I said, the idea here is just to touch these pads here. I've never had success with that. Maybe if, you know, I don't know if this is some kind of a magnetic alloy in here, but if this was magnetic, then probably this would attach to the pins and just stay there automatically. All right, guys, so this dongle hair worked pretty well today. Really good, affordable price, $7 at the time of filming, so not a bad price. Now, if you're just gonna flash one receiver, $7 may not be worth it, but if you have a lot of receivers, this is gonna be worth itself or pay for itself after two or three receivers. All right, so I haven't tested this and seen that it works very well, actually. Who is this device for? Now, I'd say if you are an Express LRS you know, user, this is a no-brainer, guys. Um, as I said before, I've used tons and tons of Express LRS receivers, and this was the first one to be bricked. So would I throw this away? And in fact, no, I didn't throw it away. I kept it, in fact. So I know there was a way to recover this receiver and sure enough, Beta FB has the solution right here. Now the second person who might want this is a person who likes to test their receivers on the bench, just like as I did earlier. Um, if I wanna see if this works, if it's bricked, I wanna see if this goes into bootloader mode or just to see if it goes into Wi-Fi mode, I can just apply power to these two connections right here and just use like a brick here and then I can test my receiver. It's a really good tester once you know what these lights mean. So yeah guys, this thing is really good. I was surprised that Beta FB actually made this because this is not really a new device, but this is a better take on it. This is more of a redesign, a more user-friendly option. And the price isn't that expensive, guys. As I said, if you flash two or three brick receivers, this thing pays for itself. All right, guys, so let me know what you think about this Express LRS dongle. Is this something that you might consider getting or maybe put into your toolbox? I think it's a very valuable tool, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, if you're interested about Express LRS receivers, how to install them and how to flash them, I've done multiple videos on that, and I'll leave them linked right here. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.